Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? This is the cross-cut sled that I've been using on my table saw for the last 10 years or so and it served me pretty well. It has one cool feature which is that the front fence is adjustable but the back fence is not. If it ever gets out of, out of calibration it's really easy to adjust these bolts by loosening them, re-squaring it, and then tightening them up again. The other thing I like about the, the sled is that it's very wide or, or, or deep. So I can put a 36 inch panel in here and that was useful for me uh, well 10 years ago when I built an office and I had a 36 inch wide desk or 36 inch deep desk. Um, so the downside of that is that it can be heavy to use, especially because this is made out of MDF. Being this large, it's pretty heavy to maneuver all by myself. So if I have a wide piece and I have to push it all the way through, it starts to tilt down and I really need to help her. Very often I have to call on my wife to be my outfeed table for me and hold on to the other side of it as I push it through. So let's get started. For my crosscut sled, I'm going to use Baltic birch plywood, three quarter inch plywood. And I'm going to cut it first into two pieces, and that will make it easy for me to attach the runners. I've cut the plywood already, and I'm going to mark the edge of the miter slot here and here. But then when I cut it, I'm going to cut it so that it's positioned a little bit over the blade. I'll put a new mark on each side of the miter slot, or the miter track, and I'll mark the part that I'm going to cut out. I'll do the same on the other side. Now, the benefit of this method is we don't have to be perfect on our cut. I've set the blade and I've run a test cut. So I've set the blade so that it's going to cut about quarter of an inch high into the plywood and it's exactly three quarters of an inch exactly the width of the miter slot. The important thing now is to measure the height of the cut from the bottom of the miter slot and it looks like it's about 5 eighths from the bottom, so I'll come up an eighth of an inch. Now, based on what we know about wood, we know that it'll, it'll expand more tangentially across the grain than it will radially in this direction. So what that means is we want this to be the half inch thickness because it's going to expand more than this direction. This will be the thickness. Um, this, this will be exactly the same as the thickness of the miter slot. All right, so while the runners are gluing onto the bottom of the sled, uh, we'll go ahead and cut the front and back fences. Okay, this is the back fence, and I've got it sitting on some wax paper, and I'm gonna just glue it up. Okay, this has been gluing up overnight and it's ready to remove the clamps. Okay, so now I've got two straight and flat pieces to support the fence. So what I'm going to do now is joint the top and bottom so I've got nice smooth, nice flat surfaces. And then I'm going to glue a very straight piece of maple onto the bottom. There's really no guarantee that this is that this plywood material is going to remain straight and flat. 
And so that's the purpose of the maple that's been jointed. That'll keep it nice and, nice and flat. Nice and flat, nice and straight. All right, so now we've got nice flat tops and bottoms of the fence pieces. And the next step is to glue the strip of maple onto the bottoms. Just before gluing up, I'm just gonna take a quick pass with sandpaper, clean up any tear out that the jointer may have caused. Now the last thing I'll do just before leaving these to dry is to use a damp rag and to remove any glue squeeze out because it'll be a lot easier to clean up now than it will be after it dries. Okay, the runners are glued in. Um, I had a little bit of squeeze out in this runner, along this runner. So I used my chisel and a little bit of sandpaper and now I'm just doing a little bit of fine tuning. I want them to fit tightly, but not so tight that they're difficult to push through. So I think I'm just about there. I'm going to give it a try. That's pretty good. A little bit, a little bit more right here. now the runners fit really perfectly so the next thing to do remember um, when I placed the runner I placed it in such a way that there was a little bit of an overhang over the blade with each piece that way now that the runners installed I can run this through cut off the excess and I will be left with a perfect zero clearance curve between the two pieces and then when I connect them with the two fences, everything will be square, everything will be parallel to the blade, parallel to the miter slots, exactly the way that we want this set up. So I'll raise up the blade and cut off the left hand side of the crosscut sled. And now we've got a nice tight fit on this side. Okay, before I begin the assembly, I think it's worthwhile to give everything a, a light sanding. That'll make it easier to finish later. And, um, you know, to remove any glue residue that might be remaining, even though I wipe it up with a damp rag, there's still a little bit of residue here. So I'll do that quickly with some 120 grit sandpaper, and then I can begin the assembly. The other thing I need to do is to cut this um, L-shaped aluminum. This is 8th inch aluminum, so it's, it's pretty strong. Um, that'll help to keep the fences straight. And the purpose of this is to give the adjustability. So Alright, I've got the aluminum cut. And now what I want to do is mark where I'm going to put the bolts. I'm going to put four bolts and screws on the left hand side and two on the right hand side. So I'm very happy I get to use my dr new drill press table and fence. This is a really good use of a fence because I want to have all of the holes positioned the same distance from the edge. So what I've done is I've marked uh, one side of the L with the letter B to, to be the bottom. And the reason I've done that is I want the holes on the aluminum on the bottom portion to be a little bit larger than the diameter of the bolts and that way I'll have ability to move and, and make minor minor adjustments. I've also clamped the aluminum in place. Um, it's not absolutely necessary but this will uh, prevent the aluminum from drifting as I'm drilling 
and I'll end up with nice round holes. One thing I forgot to do is to open up the back a little bit. Actually, I won't get a good dust collection here anyway because of the way that I've oriented the, the L. If I turned it around the other way and oriented it so that the high piece is facing me, then it would suck the, the metal shavings out. Now, for the holes along the bottom, I've switched to a 3 8 inch blade. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm going to take advantage of the dust collection system. So I've rearranged the fence so that the lower portion is facing that way, the tall portion is facing out. All right, the holes are drilled in the aluminum pieces. And now I'm going to get ready to mark the holes where I'm going to drill into the bottom and, and the fence. Before I do that, I want to get things relatively square because I'm only going to have minor adjustments with the aluminum um, L brackets. So I'll use my carpenter square. I can't be sure this is 100% square, but it's close enough for this first pass and then I can do the minor adjustments uh, once everything's assembled. So I'll go ahead and, and mark these holes. Um, I'll drill them through with a hand drill. And then what I'm going to do is go to the drill press and use a Forstner bit on the bottom side of the crosscut sled. And the purpose of that is to have enough space to be able to recess the heads of the bolts that are going to be coming through. And that way they won't be interfering with the sliding of the table. And just to check, I'll approach this backwards. I'll put the washer in first. It fits. Put the bolt head in, and I can see that it's still recessed about a sixteenth of an inch. So that's perfect. I'll go ahead and drill all the rest of the holes. And then I will come back with my three-eighths inch bit and drill all the way through so that the, the bolt can go through the hole. Okay, the recesses are drilled with a Forstner bit. Um, now I'll use a brad point bit and drill the holes through. And I've got this sacrificial plate um, down at the bottom that, that's round. I can just rotate it, which will prevent any tear out of the bottom. Okay, I'm ready to install the, the L bracket to the bottom of the crosscut sled. So in the bottom, remember, this is where I've cut the recess for the bolt. So I've got a quarter inch bolt a standard quarter inch washer. I'm going to slip that in from the bottom. And then on the top, I've got a fender washer, a quarter inch fender washer, a lock washer, and a nut. To attach the fence to the L bracket, I'm going to use one and a quarter inch long uh, quarter inch diameter screws with a hexagonal head. So what I've done, rather than relying on my pencil marks that I drew earlier, now that I've installed the bottom portion and, and screwed in the bottom portion of the L bracket, I use the holes to drill through just a little bit. Some people call that pre-drilling, other people object to the term pre-drilling. So I drilled a little bit um, just to mark where the hole should start. Now I'm going to use a taper bit to drill down one and a quarter inches for this screw and I'll do that all, all along for each of the each of the marked holes. Now, there's a few things that I want to do to the fence before I put it in place and install it permanently. Um, one is, I want to cut out a profile so that it's high here to shield my hand from the blade um, and also to give it more strength. And I want to use the router bit to round it over so I don't have these sharp edges to grip. And then lastly, I want to put a 45 degree chamfer along the bottom edge here so that dust will not get in the way when I'm, when I'm placing boards here.
All right, the roundover bit is installed. It's a, a one quarter inch roundover bit, and I'll just push the pieces through. Now that I have the roundover bit installed, I realize that even though I've already temporarily installed the L brackets onto the crosscut sled, um, I may as well take them off and run the edges of the crosscut sled, not, not the kerf edge, but the outside edges. That'll make it easier to handle when I'm, when I'm holding it up in the air, uh, transporting it from one shop location to another. Now I've got the 45 degree bit installed, so I'll route a chamfer along the bottom edge of each of the fences. Well, I'm just about ready for installation and assembly, but before I do that, uh, rather than install the tracks, I think it would be smarter to put a coat of tongue oil But wait, before I do the assembly, there's one thing that I almost forgot, and that is I want to run some T-tracks. And I could do it after the assembly because I'm only going to run them partly uh, all the way through. I'm not going to run them all the way through. So I could do that post-assembly, but I think it's better to do it without the fences, and then it'll be just easier for me to get at it. Okay, I've set up an edge guide. I'll have to be careful. I want to make sure that it doesn't wander away from me. So I'm going to come down. I've got start point here, um, five inches from this edge, six inches from this edge. So I will plunge down, keep it tight against the edge guide all the way to the end. Now, I purposely went a little long with the router on each end. That way, I can get the um, quarter-inch bolt head inserted easily. Now it's time to square up the fences. To do that, I'm going to use the four-cut method. And what that means is I'm going to cut four times each side of this rectangular piece of MDF. And by doing that, if there's any error, because I'm cutting it four times, it's going to amplify that error by a factor of four. That makes the error easier to measure. And then when I'm done the fourth cut, I will rotate the board one more time, do a fifth cut to cut a strip of wood that's about two inches wide, and then I'll measure the difference in the width between the top of that strip and the bottom of that strip. That will tell me the error. I'll divide that by four and then figure out how much to adjust the fence. So let's do the cuts first. Uh, I'm going to cut the long edge of the MDF first. That way, when I cut the fifth strip, it's also going to be on the long edge. And that's where size does matter. Um, when you have a longer piece to measure, there's more error that you can measure. It just makes it easier to measure the error. So here we go. I've made the four cuts, so for the fifth cut, I'm going to move the board over about two inches. And I can already see pretty easily that this is going to have a lot of error. And I did that on purpose for illustrative purposes, just to make sure that the fence was well out of square, so that you can see how I'm going to make the adjustment. So before I, did, before I do anything more, I'm going to label the ends of this strip. This is the back, and this is the front. And now I'll measure the thicknesses, or the widths. The width of the back 
is 2 and 71 1 28. So I'll write that down. And at the front, it's 2 and 49 1 28. So the error is 71 minus 49. That's 22 1 28. But that's four times the error. So I'll divide that by four. Now, I've measured the length of this strip of wood, and it's 26 and 3 eighths inches. And the distance on my fence from the pivot point to the adjustment point is 35 and a quarter inches. So we'll do the calculation now. We'll take 22 divided by 128, and then I'll divide that by 4, because that's our actual error. And then I will divide it by this length, because that will give us the, uh, the error per inch. So I'll take that number and divide it by 26.375, 26 and 3 eighths, multiplied by 35.25, 35 and a quarter, and that gives me a difference of 0 0.057 inches. Now, to measure 0 0.057 inches, I'll need to use feeler gauges. That's a handy method of measuring such a small thickness. Now, as I mentioned, I purposely set this out of square, so that's a fairly large adjustment that, compared to what you would normally have to make if you've already uh, closely approximated the squareness of the fence. So, um, the largest feeler gauge I have is 0 0.024 inches, so I'll have to use multiples of these and stack them together. So I'll use 0 0.024 and 0 0.023, that's 0 0.047, and then 0 0.010, that will give me 0 0.057 inches, and that's the distance that I need, or the thickness that I need. Now the question is which direction to move the fence? And the rule is, uh, if I'm making the adjustment on the left side, and if I have a positive difference from the back end to the front end, so if that number is positive, and if I'm making the adjustment on the left-hand side, then that means I have to move the fence toward the front of the fence. So, toward me. If it was a negative number, I would move it in the other direction. Or, if I'm making the adjustment on the other side, then I would move it in the opposite direction uh, than what I just said. If that's confusing, or if you want to see the formula for doing these calculations, you can visit my website, and you can find the link in the description below. Now, to get ready to make the adjustment, I'm going to use the strip that I just cut off, and I'm going to use the corner of that and put it right against, right tight against the fence, and clamp it in place. And now I'll loosen the fence. Now with the fence loose, I'll be able to pull it out, insert the three feeler gauges, and then I'll tighten it up. One thing I like to do, it's not absolutely necessary, but one thing I like to do is just clamp this in place so that it doesn't move while I'm tightening it. Now that I've made the adjustment to the fence, I'm gonna do another test cut to see how accurate our square is now.
We've done the final test cut just to verify that we're square. And we'll test the measurement here. One and, th oh, it's varying a little bit. One and nine thirty seconds. Flip it around the other end. And one and nineteen sixty fourths. Measured again. Yeah. So we're off by about a sixty fourth of an inch. And remember, that's the error multiplied by four. So we're off by uh, one two hundred and fifty sixth of an inch. That's pretty close for for woodworking. So we'll call that we'll call that square. So we've got the back fence squared up. I'll do the same on the front fence using the same method, and then this crosscut sled will be good to go. So would you make it? <laughs>